Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ubuntu Touch Q&A, the UbiPorts Foundation show discussing the development of Ubuntu Touch and our community's questions. This is episode 43, streamed live on January 19th, 2018. 19. It is 2019 now. <laughs> My name is Dalton, slightly sick, but still here. Uh, and joining me this week are Marius. Hey! Florian. Hello, hello. And special guest for this week, Wayne. He's not looking in the camera. <laughs> quick, quick turnaround. He's, he has the reaction time of champions. We are love, says Marius. We are love. <clears throat> That's deep, man. That was that was deep. Oh, he fixed what? it. Okay. Wow, we have a show for you today. We're going to be discussing some upcoming events and some interesting things we've discovered about ourselves, as well as a few interesting questions, one coming from Wayne, and we're going to have a bunch of discussion about that. It's going to be a great show. I hope you all join us and continue. continue. Like I said, I'm a little sick. I Speaking <laughs> is hard. <laughs> Just continue. Words don't make sense right now. So let's start off with talking about our upcoming events. So first up, we're going to be at FOSDEM as Ooh. attendees. Uh, both Marius and myself are currently booked, I believe. I booked my flight, but I don't have a hotel yet. So if I have to sleep under a bridge, um, yeah, I, it might be. Yeah? But I hope there will be plenty of space still in Brussels. We can sneak, <laughs> sneak you in and you can... Sleep okay. under a closet or something. No, I you like can count me. Idea. Go with the bridge. <laughs> do do the bridge, and then call it call it a matrix bridge. Yeah, sure. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. No, but uh, to be honest, uh, to be serious, uh, yes, I will be there for sure because the flight ticket anyway is not changeable, so I have to fly to Brussels on this weekend, no matter what. So. Even if I don't want to, in the end, I have to, so I will be there. No, joking. <laughs> um, that will be very exciting because I will uh, meet Dalton for the first time. Um, I will meet Marius for the first time as well. And Ooh. you, of course. Ooh, yeah. That's cool. Uh, all I have to hope for is that air travel doesn't like shut down in the next couple of weeks because everyone <laughs> pertaining to air travel is currently unpaid. Oh. Are you going to, are you going to, Marius, are you going to hug Dalton? Uh, Are you going to give him a man hug? It depends. I, I will see what phone he has first. <laughs> I'll probably be carrying two, honestly. But... Judge, judge him by the phone. <laughs> yeah. I'm only hugging those with Ubuntu touch phone, okay? That's, Ubuntu, that's an interesting story. Ubuntu. 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 Thank Ubuntu you. Touch. Ubuntu touch. <laughs> when we were all brought together for... Uh, our meeting in Rotterdam, which was discussed, I don't remember which episode it was, but on an episode of the Ubuntu UbiPorts audio cast. Podcast. Um, Get out of here, man. I heard the, first, the first thing Wayne did was come up to me and just huge bear hug. It's called a man hug. Yeah, man okay. Hug. But the problem was, this day it was, oh, I don't know, Celsius. At least 105 Fahrenheit. Uh, you can convert that yourself because I can't. It's unreal. Um, it was it's the warm. hottest day in like 30 years. And the car that I was taken to our meeting place in had no air conditioning. And we were stuck on the highway in uh, backed up traffic. So I was sweaty. <laughs> I still gave him a man hug. He still did. It was a and double I man felt hug. Terrible. <laughs> okay. So hopefully we won't repeat that in Fosdem. Well, no, to be honest, be... it won't be hot there. Cooler, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> probably be like five degrees around that, <laughs> if not less. Other so, upcoming events, I believe Florian is organizing one. Well, not not really organizing. I'm more like, um, let's say my my name sticks to it now because I organized the one in Vienna. But there is a second hackathon for uh, Telegram for the new Teleports Ubuntu Touch client in Stuttgart in Germany on the January 26th, and we are we are rolling the drum for it now for some time already. 
But this will be awesome because with the second hackathon for that app, we make a, a major leap, I would say. And then finally, um, this will be ready for beta, I think. So um, everybody is excited already because the app shows really that it has major improvements over the old one. But with a second hackathon, and the guys were organizing themselves, actually. I did nothing um, except to have them here in Vienna as a host. And, but in Stuttgart, they are completely self-organized. And unfortunately, I cannot go there this time. But um, yeah, um, I will join remotely, hopefully, and um, just see what they're doing, maybe with webcam or, I don't know, live streaming <laughs> myself to Stuttgart. Let's see. You can um, use the UbiPorts channel and just stream yourself. They can get the stream. And yeah. anyone else who's looking at our page will have no idea what's going on. True, yeah. This um, is a perfect idea. So anybody is welcome still. If somebody is in is surroundings of Stuttgart at, uh, next weekend, uh, then you can go there. There are details actually uh, on the Get Together community link. And I don't know if we have linked this in The link is page. in live chat now. OK, link is in live chat now. That's cool. Um, so yeah, um, I hope there will be many people and we will fix another, I don't know, 20 bucks or so, hopefully, <laughs> at least. <laughs> is that how many you got at the last one? <sighs> Hard to say. Um, right, that hmm. one was more foundational stuff. So yes, that was more. That's the where the bugs were Actually, the, the biggest achievement of the of the first one was that we build everything on GitLab. So we are uh, using the GitLab uh, CI system to automatically build everything, and it was not easy because the lib that we use, or the library from Telegram itself, the TD lib, mm -hmm. was actually. Uh, giving us some hard time to be built on GitLab, but it worked in the end, and that's really nice. Yeah. And it's also not rebuilt every time. It's actually caching the binary results, which is very nice because the builds are super fast now. Otherwise, you have to wait over two hours for the TDLib to build. It's an impossible project. Yeah. Wow. OK. Yeah. So Telegram is a lot, rather large system, though, so that makes sense. Yeah, they are doing a lot of dynamic stuff. I don't want to go into any details. It's Russian <laughs> code, and it should stay Russian code. We're not doing Wow, anything. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Good. He says it with so, love, everyone. <laughs> I'm closer to Russia than um, I would say you guys. And Yeah, um, so you're allowed to say whatever you want. No, we have. We, 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 are, we are kind of in the middle of everything here in Vienna. We are, we are um, yeah. We have a lot of Russians here, actually, all the time. I'm used to that. <laughs> they are really nice guys. I mean, you can you can say about politics what you want, so, but so so, the, so so what's a Russian code then? A Russian oh, code? No, you Russian. said you said you should leave. It, it's Russian code, and it should stay that way. Yeah, because uh, we don't it, it, we don't fully understand what they're doing there, so oh, okay. we're not going to to <laughs> critic it or to Got, gotcha, to gotcha. To gotcha. Okay, it, okay, yeah. cool. Just wonder. <laughs> never heard of Russian code before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's really a bit different. OK. So one of the things that we have to do when we are getting people together is communicate with them a lot. And uh, we do need to talk about that a bit today. Uh, that was the best segue I could muster, Wayne. Yeah, so I'm here to kind of bring a topic up that uh, is a little bit um, frustrating, sad, and all of those things put together. but. Um, I'll be your face to the situation if you need one. <laughs> Hope you like I mean, it. We should we should maybe just say that the Wayne is here for representing the the community um, uh, steering committees in some way management. So he's here in not just because he's Wayne, but he's here in the function. <laughs> it's an yes. official function. So give yourself a little bit more weight for being officially. Um, yes, exactly. That's what we want to see, but not too too serious. Okay. All right. All right. I got, I'm a little bit serious. All right, I'm going to try. So anyway, let's <clears throat> business voice. Clear the throat. <clears throat> drink the coffee. Good work. <clears throat> All right. So situation is this, people. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry because many people have sent emails to UB Ports via various means, but especially through the web form on the website. Unfortunately. Um, just so you know, our system uses a system called Odoo, and it is unfortunate, but there was a misunderstanding in how it worked or how it functioned. We still don't 100% know. 
but every single web page, uh, web form submission for the last, I don't even know how long, but it's an extremely long time, definitely more than six months. If anything was sent to us that way, unfortunately, we did reply and um, there was no reply sent. The system did not send it. So if you tried to send something to us, we are sorry. Uh, we definitely did reply to you. In fact, the second apology is going out to our good friend Milan, who has been a dedicated, awesome UB Ports uh, community member since the very beginning, really. And he has diligently gone into the uh, system and has replied to every single inquiry that came in. And unfortunately, all of his work was killed by the system. And uh, so we're very sorry, Milan, as well, for your hard work that was wasted. I know what it's like because I was doing it for a while. Um, so we're very sorry to you. And we're very sorry to anybody who tried to reach us and did not get a response. That's not how we are. And that's not how it is. It's just something that happened and unfortunately we didn't know what was happening and uh, now we know and now we're going to fix it and we're analyzing it and coming up with solutions quickly so anyway that's the report and it's not a good news report but we're glad we found it at least and can move forward from here so sorry on behalf of the community and uh, hopefully everybody from today on will see the true community from ub ports so to forgive be clear us. um this failure, the failure, we have, well, we'll have a complete postmortem on this uh, after we have it completed. But for now, the interesting thing about this issue is it was um, unreliable. So sometimes emails would go through correctly, sometimes they would not. But the times that it did work correctly, it worked correctly enough that we didn't realize that it wasn't working the other times. That's right. That's right. It, in fact, so when you would when you would reply to the person, you would see the thread forming. So you would see the sender's message. You would see your message uh, save under it, but that message never went out. So we sometimes. thought, yeah, well, That's, right, right. <laughs> the sometimes <laughs> is the key problem here. The worst thing, exactly, is is an inconsistent problem. So uh, yeah, so we're we're going to definitely have to take quick action on that, and we're working on that. So. So to be clear, for the time being, if you're interested in contributing to Ubuntu Touch, UB Ports, but you absolutely do not want to join the forums at forum .ub, forums.ubports.com or any of the Telegram groups or Matrix groups or IRC, you can email us at contribute at ubports.com. Both I and Joe, who you've met if you've been in the community, uh, are answering those emails, and you can also... Of course, find us on the forum. If you're looking for support for Ubuntu Touch, please post in the support section of forums.ubports.com. And and to be clear, that, that email address is a normal email address, so it, it will be replied in a normal It way. forwards directly to us. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So also, but just to be, be more clear, the, the problem here is that email did not send out from our uh, system so that's that's the issue here the issue is not that we didn't reply it's that email didn't get sent out without our right. knowledge that's the correct. effect is the same but <laughs> yeah. yeah but in this case we Somehow. can blame a computer even though nobody will know or care <laughs> no no not at all <laughs> anyway we're we're a team we're growing we're learning and here's another chapter in the story right and we will get this fixed up and even better than it was before exactly that's the key Whew. so thank you everyone who has been sending to us and continuing to engage with us on other platforms and also thank you to everyone who has been sponsoring ubuntu touch and ub ports hmm. you can find all of our sponsors at ubports.com slash sponsors uh that includes smooth DigitalOcean, we're going to have a blog post, I think, going up later today on how we use DigitalOcean as part of their sponsorship program, um, as well as private internet access and a bunch of others all on ubports.com slash sponsors. If you want to join in the fun and sponsor Ubuntu Touch, of course, we would love if you would join the community and contribute as well, but you can find all the links to donate at ubports.com slash donate. And that is going to be my spiel on that. Let's get into some questions, shall we? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Everyone else is muted. <laughs> questions. <laughs> questions. Mm, yeah. Yes. Our first question comes in from David this week. Is it possible to use the work made for Fluffy Chat in teleports? Uh, yes. Um, the fun fact is, right now we are merging um, a selection for the for the country code, which is for the telephone numbers. On the beginning, we are merging the selector from uh, Fluffy Chat to um, teleports, mm. and uh, this is done by Krille, by the, our amazing Fluffy Chat developer. Fluffy and Chat. I think, <laughs> hmm? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, he has also actually merged or prepared a merge for the push notification stuff. So there are already, you can say, at least two minor parts of Fluffy Chat in Teleport somehow. Yeah, uh, because they are very, very similar applications in some areas. So yes, we can reuse part, and um, we will reuse parts because uh, Krille is also in this uh, German developers group. And he was also on the hackathon in Vienna. I met him personally, and I'm very, very grateful that uh, he's also dedicating time for tele for Telegram client or Telegram app. Um, yeah, so I can answer this question. It's perfectly possible to do this. However, of course, only the parts that are not protocol specific. Um, but um, we will look into that and see what we can what we can rip off. Fluffy chat into teleports. So to back up a bit, teleports is our new Telegram client for Ubuntu Touch, and Fluffy Chat is the best matrix client to grace the earth. That's, true. You tell you, that's a nice uh, little marketing line there. <laughs> gonna write that one down. Yeah, so teleports is, by the way, the new name for the new Telegram app. So the old one is called Telegram app, which was kind of boring. The new one will be teleports. And uh, we are just working out a nice icon now. Uh, I'm going now to the second part of the question. Um, yes. you Can you make an approximate roadmap with milestones and features for teleports? No pressure, but it would just make it more clear what you're working on. Yeah, so I can already see people are very, very excited about it. So we get the questions, when will there, will there be a beta version first? Um, I kind of promised it for end of year. It didn't fully work out um, because, as usual in code and development, things are to be approximated. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, uh, what we're doing now, we, I want before we release the beta version, I want to move everything to the right GitLab place. So first we selected the name, so now it's called Teleports. Then we changed in the code uh, all the references, so it will now be shown already when you install it with the new name. It will install in the right namespace. Um, and um, we are transferring it from, from my fork, let's say, into the UbiPorts organization on GitLab. That's the step before I want to release the beta version. Because then it's coming from the right place, from the final place, and we don't have to do any transitions. So before we have a beta version where the people know, OK, here is the code maybe, or here's the latest release, I want to be in the final place. And that will be GitLab, um, the UbiPorts organization. So this will be happening probably this week the upcoming week and we are now discussing a new icon for it also because we also cannot use exactly the same official icon than telegram uses itself so it will be a similar icon in some way or something completely different we have a lot of choices already and with the new name and the new icon the beta will be ready and then we're going to announce and release that and i will ask wayne of course for a nice shout out in the ub ports news channel and um yeah on other places wow he's holding up the the he printed out one of the stickers from the sticker pack for telegram <laughs> no, i got a sticker for all it's all it's my payment for all my hard work man it's a yeah. Yubi sticker, the the Yubi sticker. The so uh to to continue with the roadmap basically um the the push notifications are in but they're not activated this should be easy but then what we are still missing is things like group administrations um some dialogues for profile, for changing options, and so. Um, the biggest thing, however, will be reply and forward and media handling. So the reply and forward will be the next thing, probably. I will try to work on this a little bit. And then media handling for videos, for GIFs, and up and download, actually, and in Content Hub integration. Uh, I think this will be the next things on the roadmap for the early spring. And um, then, with, with every small little step that we take, 
um, we think we will do the, the management functions last. So like if you can add or remove people from a group, if you can, if you can uh, moderate the group, these things, if you're admin of a super that's group. A, that's example. a really important one. When you got to kick yeah. somebody out of a group and you got to run down to your other computer to do it. It's yeah, because hard. because he's standing like <laughs> Wait a second. I'll you see it on the mobile phone and think, oh my God. I Where are you going, honey? Forward. I'm running to ban somebody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we know it's important to have management functions on groups, of course, especially in large communities. Like we're approaching 2,000 members in the super group. And um, yeah, uh, but this will be still something that for the day for the day to day use and for the normal use is not so important. So the basic messaging messaging features are the most important ones, and that you can see all the media, that you can download files, that you can upload files, and hopefully also to re-enable the audio uh, messages because some people really want to use this use this on a regular basis. That you record audio messages and can play them. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think then we are on a pretty good way. Then things like proxy support is also on the list, of course. Um, so we want to finally have all the features of the of the mm, official clients that are important for us, so that people don't have so much disadvantages when they use our app. That should be on par with the official one. Yeah, and if we can uh, make it this year, hopefully also, of course, uh, calls. Calls is something that we don't know yet if it works fully with the TD lib, but we will see. Um, but phone calls could be nice also to have. This is some kind of stretch goal that I have for, let's say, summer or so. Yeah. So if people want to go to learn more about teleports or how to get involved, where should they go? Um, yeah, that's a good question because now we don't really have any any let's say interest group, forum, subgroup, or whatsoever. Um, they I can know, of I course know a guy who can make a group like that for you. Yeah, I mean we have a Telegram developers group. This is um, this is kind of um, twenty two members actually. I see it's quite. So basically, nice they should contact you. Yeah, I mean, if really somebody wants to contribute uh, with coding, then he can contact me anytime or write on the forum in the in the app subgroup. If we find enough interest for for users and um, and other things, then we can also maybe create a forum subgroup there. I don't know if we're going to do this for the core apps in such a way. Um, anyway, on on GitLab when it's live, you are always invited to comment with bug reports, feature requests, and such things. Um, so when it's existing there, um, don't hesitate to uh, make a GitLab account if you don't have one and start uh, communicating with us on the tracker there. That's the easiest, uh, the, the, the low hanging fruit for everyone that uh, has a problem with the Teleports app. Yeah. If you're not a developer, then we are happy to receive comments there. And of course, in the forum or on the supergroup, you can also Ask people in supergroup sometimes, of course, there are a lot of messages, so be patient or try to rephrase it after some time. But the forum maybe is the best place if you have just generic questions on the on the apps, on all the core apps actually, not only on tele teleports, but uh, if you have problem with the calculator because um, I don't know, it's not it's not getting your numbers right, then yeah, <laughs> ask a forum right. or ask Wayne maybe he knows. <laughs> I, yeah, man, I know everything about apps. Just you ask me. <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> what is two plus two? Uh, five. Yes. Oh, uh, see, yeah. anytime. anytime. <laughs> oh, hello, live chat. Hello, 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 hello. I think that's, yes, that is exactly how many hellos there are. Actually, um... hello from Norway. <laughs> <laughs> the question on the live chat, the, word, the last one, we should answer as the last question for today. Don't 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 spoil it now, but uh, I will write it down. That's a nice one. Um, okay, so I'm quite finished with my roadmap. Um, I can um, we can continue with the next question, probably. Yes. So Tiger Pro asked, said, I would like to know if there will be any boot camps for learning how to troubleshoot various aspects like a phono and basic methods to try that supplements the guide for porting. I feel like this would be beneficial for the various stages of porting to a device. I myself have much to learn, especially when it comes to documentation for my port, as well as troubleshooting various things. Now, on my to-do list, which comes up every time I open any terminal window, it says 2018 
0.08-17 help Marius schedule live porting. Hmm. <laughs> I think I've wanted to do I think we've wanted to do this for a while. So, finally, Marius this morning asked, uh, do you want to do it next week? And I said, I don't see why not. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll announce specifics um, this week on the forum and Telegram everywhere about a stream we'll be doing or possibly just a live chat session that may that will record um, where we can talk about things like that. So, keep, stay yep. tuned for that. We're Very finally cool. getting it done. Cool. I can finally get that cleared off my to-do list. <laughs> Good. So, so also to to just specify what will be the the content of this. Um, this will be strictly porting and and tribal support. Um, we will also dig into to more of the the workings of the inner Ubuntu Touch. Um, and uh, it, it it's basically will be a recorded session where you also can go back to to see information on how stuff works and how stuff doesn't work. <laughs> awesome. That's a <clears throat> that's super awesome. Psych That's a great idea. Coming. So it's kind of going to be like, a, if you will, like a bit of a lesson that you'll maybe lead and then we can go back and watch after in a non-live environment, right? Yeah, I think that uh, the start of it will be That's that. Uh, it, it's still not, it's still uh, to be discussed. Um, Very good. But, but how I see it in my mind right now is that we start with a basic introduction and then we just all join to maybe an appearance session and just yeah. hack. That's best. Mm -hmm. Just a recorded hackathon more deal yeah. is what we're going to do. Good. Yeah. Good, All good. Right. Quick shout out to Tiger Pro, by the way. This guy is awesome. Doing a lot of self-learning and making awesome progress. And uh, by the way, should be an inspiration to anybody in the uh, community. Uh, you know, he's inspired me. And um, yeah, really amazing. What was it, a Note 4? Or what is it, the device? He's, he's supporting using? to the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. When he joined, he had no experience with any of this. So awesome. everyone who says that, I don't think I can contribute to that. I don't have any experience with coding or anything. You don't need it. All you need to be, excuse me, all you need to be able to do is have a will to learn, mm -hmm. uh, be able to search for the errors that you see, and be able to ask questions and take answers from us so yeah and it's awesome that now from his work we're where it looks like we're heading towards uh, you know an actual some documentation here some kind of structure some teaching this is really uh, positive news by the way because imagine for every new device we open up it just opens up a whole floodgate of uh, new new people to the community too yeah exactly and I think this also be be really beneficial to to also get this information in a in a more um, uh, talk f format instead of just a, a wall of text. Uh, yeah, I think that's yeah. that's something that I missed when I started, uh, especially yeah. with on the Android side, because the Android side of before it's better now, but before it was basically no information and the only you have to scatter to the source code. Mm -hmm. um, and to to have someone that just explain to you this how you do it in a in a live session is uh, would be really really nice. So that's mm -hmm. that's. Uh, going to be amazing i think awesome as well as being able to ask those questions so people who are live will be able to do that exactly okay up next ll in our forum very descriptive username <laughs> i'm surprised no one has registered Lima, that before, Lima? It Lima, is Lima? linux linux <laughs> linux linux um asking about the purism lib handy the aim of LibHandy is to help with developing UI for mobile devices using GTK Plus and GNOME technologies. I understand that your goal is Unity with Qt, but do you think that it could lead to some convergence or collaboration opportunities? Yes, it, it definitely will be, pun intended, handy to have this... Uh... <laughs> I quit. I'm done. <laughs> Uh, it will be really beneficial to to have support for it, and and also the other way around. Um, you have our our apps supported on on the Librem five, um, and the, with the, the pure OS, um, because that's that's how desktop work. Um, and and we really want to mimic that that you can can be a really really cross platform type. Uh, it called cross platform type operating system. Um, technically, you can run GTK application already in, in XMIR, um, but still, it's a, it's a non-handy way of doing it. Oh. <laughs> but um, of course, this is something we, we really want to, to work on. 
work against, uh, not against, but work for. Um, <laughs> Almost English. the same, against, for... Uh, yeah, English is hard. Kind of, kind uh, of the same. But um, the thing is that um, um, with us moving to to supporting Wayland, um, I don't think this will be a huge deal on the, the graphic side of things. Right. Um, the bigger problem will be the packaging and uh, firing out any specifics that happen so i uh but but we are we are happy that they are on debian based system so basically the packaging um is there be, yeah yeah we um but yeah and this is also to be discussed since we don't really know how things are going to work with the ha lib handy yet um we we only have a they only scratching the surface right now um so once the surface is all scratched up uh we can start digging into it <laughs> <laughs> that was neat. That was neat use of English yeah. right there. Yeah, too many puns in in one. Uh, every time, every time you try to use a simile, it works in Norwegian, but not in English. <laughs> <laughs> now, Wayne, this is the question that. I have been wanting to get to all thirty minutes. <laughs> so please, Wayne, present your question. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> speaking into my sock here. Oh, shoot. Oh, it fell. No. <laughs> it's the duct tape. I'm telling we are you, man. Professional, everyone. Here's my question <clears throat> Is money, money, the only thing that's halting, slowing, hindering Ubuntu touch development? Take it away. Go. Go. No. no. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so let's get into this uh, a, a bit. Um, yes, let's do this. So the answer is no, and and the the reason for this answer is, um, as an open source community, uh, we we are not we of course we are depending on on money in 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 some some way, um, but the biggest the the absolute biggest value is contributors, uh, contributing to the the source code itself, contributing to uh, translation to to graphical design uh, and all these areas. Um, so with an open source community, um, this can be done, not completely money free, uh, because you have servers and everything that that does cost money. Um, but without hiring people, uh, which is uh, I, I think the root of this um, comes from money to hire developers. Um, we can do this without without hiring people um in in that sense but this is this is also the hard part uh, since since and it's especially hard for us uh with with the amount of devices we have not many people have these uh devices that we are supported um so getting into development itself in the bunch that is is not the easiest uh of course it it's um it's easier once we have a device, but also once we have a device, is is hard to to wrap your hand around the, the <laughs> compiling. The, the yeah, I'm going very developing specific, and I will leave it off to Dalton because I, I see he he wants to talk. Go. So when Wayne presented this question this morning, earlier this morning, go for it. <laughs> he it sparked off a bit of a discussion between us. And then I said, wait, let's save this. We need to talk about this in the Q and A, not between ourselves. That's true. So uh, to take more of a business theory, community theory um, approach to this question, the problem that this question hides is trying to apply a business idea to a community project. In a lot of ways, um, when you ask a question like this, you are asking, is the problem of Ubuntu Touch not being on every phone everywhere, that there isn't a big company telling everyone what to do to make the software? And that might not have been what you mean, but I've seen a similar idea from elsewhere. Yes. I want <clears throat> to get that out of the way sorry <clears throat> well that's perfect no you you choke on your your eternal frog there while i uh, ask another question so what i'm what what i was really saying so everything marius said there a second ago 
would seem to indicate that if I gave him money for each one of those things, that it would be solved. Because, for example, he said, okay, we can't get it on every device. Okay, well, what if I paid Tiger Pro to go and put it on every device? Exactly. Now, now we've got it on every device. So you see what I mean? So I think, Dalton, what you're saying, and this is a good point. If I'm like I'm I'm a I'm Corporation A and I say I want to do this 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 in software and hardware. Um, hey, there's uh, UB Ports guys. Uh, you know, and uh, maybe I'll just th throw money at it. Um, in one way, I, I I think it would work, but on the other hand, it doesn't work, and that's what we're talking about right here. And because both both, I think we're all on the same page. We all would agree that like uh, another one would be Rodney. Okay, like imagine if Rodney had you know, just enough money to just do the things we know he can do, right? We, we all know what he's skilled at. Unity 8 might be making some great progress. Uh, you know what I'm saying, right? So could we, so, so, so my feeling is that if there was a complementary business that ran alongside of uh, Ubuntu Touch and UB ports, so that it would work because it has to be complementary, perfectly complementary. Exactly. <laughs> So money can be used as a catalyst for the community that already existed. And we see that time and time again in open source where like Red Hat or GitLab will look at a, at a project and say, that's a cool project. I want them. I want you to do exactly what you're doing right now, except I write you a check for it. Okay. So tell me about that. Did that work? Uh, did Red Hat just get bought for $34 billion? Okay. <laughs> so it worked. Now, um, so then, what? What? Well, from your experience, then, what? How, how could we? What? What is UB Ports and Ubuntu Touch here? I mean, what? What? Where are we? Where do we want to go? We want to be a free and private operating system. I don't even want to say mobile operating system because, really, with Unity Eight, we could be much more than that. So. So my question is, what what would be a, a complementary fit that would ride up alongside of us and be that perfect marriage that, okay, and, and then uh, I don't want to throw two questions at the same time, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, what, I didn't, there's a lot of people who agree that <clears throat> canonical model was good, but it didn't quite work. It was too restrictive and the community felt like maybe some cool ideas would never happen because canonical said, no, it's not going to happen. But is there some kind of a nice marriage between the canonical model and something else? Uh, canonical is probably not the best idea since you have a, a rich South, uh, South African man driving it and uh, the money comes mostly from there. I see. Uh, so I, I think in the beginning. Yeah, in the beginning. Um, and now especially... they need to make a profit and they need to do it quickly. That's... So Yeah. But um, I, I think Red Hat is a, is a good example for this. Uh, of course, this can can be done, um, and uh, I, I think that's that's. Um, but I think what we we really would benefit is going from from on the way that the Linux Foundation is going, where you have multiple companies coming in um, with money and and sponsoring it, uh, because then you don't have a single company in control, which is what mm -hmm. we don't want in the first place that's right you don't want that like because we goal. we do yeah. not want here's what we we all know what we don't want is for uh, what was android to become google you know you know i'm talking about like we don't yeah. want one company to come and screw everything up <laughs> so did i say that on youtube <laughs> but yeah uh, but what you're saying something along the line like like say a phone manufacturer or someone makes a phone uh for them to then Put the bunch of touch for on the on their phone, but also contribute back, uh, and then you have multiple ODMs or manufacturers doing this. Um, is it then you have a, a, a solid model in my mind, where you have, um, <laughs> will my I want to rule the He's world. He's broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just saw a comment on Telegram from from Bill Atwood. Uh, he said, I want Morris to rule the world. Um, I want two, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ultimate goal, uh, by the way. Uh, but but the thing is, um, uh, okay, try to get back to it in, in track here, is that we don't want to go the Google route of one single company having control over Android. And, That's and, on, and, yeah, that. you know, mm -hmm. and we, we rather want, like Linux Foundation, have multiple companies coming in from, uh, have a seat position uh, to, instead of, 
you have, let's take a BQ, for example, if they have a bunch of touch on their phone, they can then contribute with money back uh, to money or developers in the one way to then make a bunch of touch better. But then you have on the other side, you also have multiple others coming in and doing exactly the same. Um, this is the, the, the perfect balance uh, that we want to have. Uh, and that's that a, a healthy model for, in my mind, for our open source community. Uh, and, and that's kind of the thing with community. Instead of one person coming in and doing the same, you have a bigger company doing essentially what this one person do too, but with a lot more uh, resources and a lot more people doing work. So okay. okay, but how do you, Here, here's a question that I've always thought about. And um, <clears throat> so let's just say that we have, you uh, I start to say Ubuntu like you there, Marius. Got to be careful. Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu. Wow, <laughs> I affected him. <laughs> oh, so basically, what I'm saying, trying to say now, I'm trying to get back on track. I saw a picture of a, a king's crown on Marius there too when he was saying rule the world. I got to get that out of my head as well. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so we, we've got uh, we've got Ubuntu Touch. Uh, sitting there as an awesome operating system and let's just say the community is which we are right now it's basically only community driven and it's now what if a company comes alongside let's just run an example like uh i don't know some uh, toaster a toaster company wants to put uh ubuntu touch on their toaster okay so that it can call home when the toast is ready um so anyway now this this, what if they don't need uh, you know matrix running on the toaster right they only need the telephone uh, dialer right can you then can you then as toaster company take the ubuntu touch operating system and kind of skin it for your toaster and not mess up the yeah the, sure yeah, yeah. i mean all, we, we've then you're profiting with the technical here but yeah you can do that but, but as but long then, as you follow um, follow the the license. We have mostly new license, so that means that you can't close source your source. You have to to provide it open source, and you have to provide it with your binary, which is an awesome license, and it's the only thing I license thing with. Uh, okay. So so that's the the main but main thing. But uh, in an open source world, anyone can can do. Oh, that. so 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 basically, I can do whatever I want with my toaster. I'm not making a toaster company, by the way, just secretly. <laughs> I know you thought I was, but I'm not. Um, so so if I had my toaster company and, and all I have to do is just make sure that anybody can open and hack that toaster freely. Mm -hmm. No, mm, no. Um, the, the, the thing is that the source code that you make has to be open source. Uh, it doesn't really say anything that, that should be uh, be. Uh, be open ah, okay i like, think i get it now. okay great yeah so, that, so any company can come along and benefit from the the uh ubuntu touch development in that way as yes. long as they don't try to lock it down and steal it for themselves exactly okay. i think okay. that's the, the most that's the most valuable part, point about the new license is okay uh, like for example i don't want to waste my work and 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 someone comes down and make it a proprietary system uh, and I think right. that's that's really valuable. Uh, okay, for awesome. a community, for a community like us, it's it's the best thing ever. Okay, so then we do have a very good model, and then we are on the right track because, and I am still, I knew I knew the foundation idea is a good idea in principle. So to have the uh, UB Ports Foundation, um, which is kind of independent and can operate like the Linux Foundation, where we bring in funds from any company that wants. Toaster Company can give UB Ports Foundation money. Um, a cell phone manufacturer can give uh, UB Ports community money, and and all of that will benefit towards better, richer code. As long as those companies don't go and take the code and close it down, it should be fine, right? Yeah. Okay. But as I, long as I, I think it, license. Yeah. It, the they same applies to 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 contributors to as with companies, right? So, um, like for example. As I said before, we don't want one single entity to have control, uh, but that also apply for for people. Like I, for example, I don't want to have control. Um, as I said, the, the joke before about ruling the world, I has to go come back to that. I don't want to have control over Ubiport because that's that's the thing that Ubiport is supposed to be a community project. Uh, it's not supposed to be led by anyone. It's supposed right. to be led by everyone. 
uh, and that's the, that's the beauty um uh, so so let's and, say and yeah. the chaos <laughs> yeah the, well the, yeah of course it would be uh some ups and downs but uh for the most part is uh the community is community is the next step in software uh the proprietary model is old and uh the community is what what rocks for sure no for sure and but but this comes back to the original question which is how um is money halting the project and so i think it's safe to it's say not halting that it. It's slowing it down. I think it would be, be the correct uh, world. Uh, I mean, sorry. I, I did that, that. Thank you for the correction. That's 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 correct. Yeah. So so then so then a company that's doing a project. Okay. Here's and here's another scenario. So toaster company wants to have the most successful toaster ever in in the toaster world. So they decide. Okay, I'm going to partner with UB Ports here, and <laughs> I'm going to make this toaster. So they start spending money on the toaster, and they're going to invest in this motherboard. This toaster is going to be awesome, right? <laughs> Wi-Fi chips. I mean, dude, this thing will toast bread, right? <laughs> and and you can. T I mean, you can log in remotely, SSH into your toaster, and um, change the. Oh man, this is going to be good. All right, so we got toaster. Why are you laughing, man? This is serious here. All right, yeah, so we got yeah. uh, <laughs> so we got a toaster going here. Now I can give money over to uh, I can just take uh, an anonymous block of money and just give it to UB Ports. Uh, but but I but I guess the secret is I can't really see. Here's what I'm wondering: How can what I need for my toaster be directed at the UB Ports? community because i don't want to run the community or 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 kind of influence it from a okay you know what i'm saying, you know what I'm saying so right? if i can okay. rephrase this for you Thank what you. you're looking for <laughs> is to have someone who understands how ubuntu touch works and you want to change it to toast the best bread you've ever toasted in your yeah, life that's right and you uh, want to put right. money in to do this, but you don't want to control the entire community with it. I don't want to make Ubuntu touch like Android is today. I want to make sure that it goes wherever it needs to go for other people too, not just my toaster company. Because I might want to start a cell phone company right after the toaster is super successful. <laughs> Obviously, it will be. <laughs> You're going to make this April Fool's joke happen, and I, that scares me. Um, <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> What you could do in that case as the toaster company is be in the community and engaging with the community. Find one of the developers who seems to be talented, has already proven themselves through pull requests, whatever it may be. Okay. Sponsor them to work on what you want to work on. Someone in the chat said, I want this toaster now. <laughs> You're a good salesman. <laughs> Um, Man, we all need so, you know, this. find find that contributor who you can tell that they re they're really passionate about Ubuntu Touch. They make they're trying to make this the best operating system they can because they want to use it. They're making this the best car because they want to drive it. There car you go. Analogy. Thanks for the there car analogy. By the way, we needed that. Hire them. Uh, okay, so I would okay, so I would hire them through my corporation, and they would just go put the code. Oops, sorry, I hit my mic again. There, the socks in the way here. <laughs> Gonna have to adjust this uh, duct tape again. Um, so they have to. So I would just hire them independently through my company and say, "Hey, go ahead and uh, write code for our toaster, and then just put it into the open code base." You and could get lab. And lab since over. that contributor probably understands our development models already, he could help you get that into the. Uh, code base that everyone uses. Okay. So now, if what you need for your toaster is this one function to run really, really fast, you need mm -hmm. it to make calls faster than anyone ever has before. You I, I want fast toast. That. It is true. And then after you have made this change, you've made calls faster than anyone ever, you can contribute that back. And now everyone who uses Ubuntu Touch makes the fastest calls ever. Okay. Alternatively, you could also have your own developers um, come into the Ubuntu Touch community and interact with us to push things in your direction. Okay. It may still help to have a contributor who is high in the ranks to help get everything reintegrated to help um, facilitate that, but that could also work to have your own development team working on Ubuntu Touch and reintegrating. 
Awesome. Okay. Well, that that is awesome. I know we we don't have a lot of time left, but I thought that it That's was. Okay. Uh, it's a you know it's a really good topic and i think it's an important one because there's a lot of people from time to time especially a lot of people pop into the community and they're thinking they have a business idea right they actually really want to try something in tech and that's or it might even be a company shows up says you know hey we're thinking about doing xyz uh can we work together with you um we need to know how all that works and um and perhaps people just never thought of doing it this way. And I think for me, uh, being part of the uh, UB Ports community has completely opened up my mind. Um, and you know, who knows where this will go? I, I, I've told you privately that I'm having some conversations with different people and mm -hmm. there's a few people now very interested in what we're doing. Um, so I'm asking this for not just for- uh, For completely know, selfish reasons. Okay, fine. It's for completely <laughs> selfish reasons. I was trying to hide it with the toaster. <laughs> but uh yeah man you you got me it's uh totally selfish but uh, if we if but, we torture wayne more then he will tell us who is working for yeah we'll find <laughs> out all the dirty truth who is um, your boss yeah maybe let's let's uh spend me also two under cents the on bridge that downtown um, I think what we what we didn't mention so far is that uh, when you try with a company model uh to post this on a community that won't work also because they are have inherently different goals somehow a company to some certain degree must earn money in a time frame that is much shorter than a community can have mm. because uh, when we are not economically depending on the results on the outcome and we can also fail in the community we can we can have a very bad release we can have some bugs sometimes um that can be fixed yeah? mm. a company sometimes cannot risk to 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 fail because there are actually people behind that are depending for their livings on their That's incomes, on their salaries and so on. So it would be a quite high barrier to say, okay, when, when all of us that are now in the community more or less, or in the board for the, for the upcoming foundation, when we all would be hired by a company, first, it's very complex because we're not sitting in the same countries. Second one, it costs a lot of money, including all the taxes, the barrier is so high. And even then, it might be that it's not successful because then we have to switch priorities. Suddenly we would have to have a product that we can somehow sell or market. And uh, we could not spend too much time with features that we love, let's say. We would need to spend more time on features that can earn money. And that is how most of the software companies work in some way. Some of them, however, grow so big that they can spend again time on what they love. And if you look on uh, Google and Microsoft and others, to be honest, they're burning a lot of money that they don't even might have. Maybe they just have financial tricks somehow to get more money invested. Mm -hmm. Especially Google is burning for a ton of money. But on the other hand, they are they are earning also a lot. Yeah? So they can afford it to a certain degree to say, OK, we try out things and then we see if they work and we can fail and so on and so on. But right. nobody says that. Um, in the end, it's not a business that needs to be successful. That's also why Canonical actually abandoned Ubuntu Touch because for them, it was uh, clear at a certain point that they cannot bring it to a to a real value that, that gives back what they need. And this is uh, sustained in the market. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I think it's uh, it, the community works quite differently and the, the goals are different here. It's more like, um, let's say, saving that for the future, being a little bit political, being a little bit um, also, let's say, selfish in a positive way to say, we are doing this for us. And if somebody else uh, wants to contribute, he's invited to do so. But we are not forcing anybody and we are not being forced by anyone. Uh, and I think that's the great thing about a, a community. Yeah. Okay, that's my part on this, so. Yeah, but I think right. I also want to to add to that, and, and what Florian is saying that that um, that they have a uh, a motto to do something to earn money, um, and 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 that's also the, the beautiful thing with with working with a community because um, let's say Wayne's toaster company uh, can focus on on his things at the same time as the community does what they love. Uh, so, so even though they need to make money for his toaster and he needs to make this toaster really toasting toast. Um, I just want we, the toaster. Yeah, we, we in the community won't really be affected by that. We in the community will still carry on with, with what we, we do and we will then get outside contribution from, from, from Wayne and his, his toast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Most importantly, we will be able to eat the toast. 
You yes. may find me, but you will not find my toast. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he. Okay, so uh, everyone, watch out for this toaster, and it will be we win this coming toaster. in twenty twenty. Twenty Tony toast toast as you had never toast your toast before. That's toaster.com. Toaster.com. We thought that we would have flying cars. Instead, we got a toaster. <laughs> now your grandma can SSH into her toaster too. <laughs> okay, guys, stop the toaster now for a moment. I mean, it's, we are running off the rails quickly now. <laughs> no, no, the toast is fun. Fine. Okay. Are we toasted then? Yes. Probably yes, we are toasted. <laughs> um, so I see we're getting close to the top of the hour again, so we might need to punt some of these to next time. Um, and also next time might be a little strange because we will be at Fosdem, so probably won't be able to stream from the Fosdem floor. Oh, we, we can try. Maybe it works out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. If the so internet is stable. Yeah. Um, the last question has been marked very clearly here. Dave in the super group asks, why is Marius sitting in a different room for every Q and a this is the, the old room. This is the, the old OG room. If you remember from way back, OG, the OG room. So Marius got a new camera this week. Thank oh, yeah. goodness. Because last week he was using his PlayStation. I, yeah, this one. Yeah, that thing. It, mm, it's really this, bad. It's this really is a really camera. nice camera. Now you can see all the details. Look at this. You can see all the details. Ooh, if it would focus. Is that? It, if it would focus. It's a Pine 64 board. Ooh, yeah. And also why I'm sitting in this room uh, is that completely reorganized this room to, to be my my workstation and 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 my, my laboratory of some sort. Uh, Sweet. Is that Red Bull? Dude, man. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way, that was a wooden ceiling you have. That's pretty awesome. Ah, yeah. Uh, it's a it's an old old house. But the reason why I'm sitting here now is this this is my new um, hacker hacker space. Um, it's it's pretty much just organized and um, what it was before. And before I I used my my XPS to to record this because it had a better camera. Uh, and since XPS is uh, is it's a compact machine. I can uh, sit in different rooms, um, but with this, I need to sit here, and that's why I'm here today. And probably will will continue to be in this as my my room for for Q and A's and hacking. So that's a good answer for a question. And we're yeah. happy about that because now we can actually see you, and you aren't blue. Da -ba -da -da -da. Definitely, definitely more clear, man. Definitely more good camera. Nice yeah. job. Yeah, this uh, I I really love the the quality of this as you can see. If it would focus, uh, you can see. Nope. It's a, it's a, uh, 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 it's a good quality camera, but it can't <laughs> focus. <laughs> okay, well, I think that can wrap it up. Then we're gonna punt some questions to next week. I think next time that is. So thank you everyone for watching the Ubuntu Touch Q and A or listening. We do have a large listening audience out there. Hello everyone. <laughs> Hello. We might Howdy. be finished now, but this doesn't stop here. You can find us at all of the social networks that you could possibly imagine, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google+, rest in peace, Mastodon, Diaspora, <laughs> Matrix. Oh, and you can also chat with us in Matrix on Telegram or on IRC. All of the links are in the description below. And the forum. And you can also go to the forum at forums.ubports.com. That's a good place for longer forum discussions that are active that are good. I like those more. <laughs> That's where like you go for the lists. good. Hey, mailing list. <clears throat> oh, no. Oh. Mailing list. <laughs> hey, is it only me that loves mailing list? Am yes. I? Yes. Okay. <laughs> We will see you in the next show that might be uh, more than two weeks from now due to our travel schedules. But as always, we will be announcing it on Telegram, in the forums, and everywhere else that you can find us. So thank you once again for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Slap Press the like button. button. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.